Is the 6.5 Grendel a viable precision rifle cartridge? This week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is brought to you by Modular Driven Technologies. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out mdttac.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday we are going to talk about the 6.5 Grendel. Now, for the last couple of years, we've gotten a lot of questions on the 6.5 Grendel and if it would be a good option for precision rifle shooting, precision rifle competition, and just general overall target shooting. And uh, to this point, I really haven't had much uh, experience personally with the 6.5 Grendel. I have seen them show up at some competitions. I've seen them fail miserably at some competitions. And really, I just kind of uh, discounted it as not something I really wanted to get into. I kind of stuck it over there in the side with uh, 6.8 SPC and a bunch of the other uh, AR-15 sized Wildcats and didn't think much about it. Well, Grendel has come a long way since then. Uh, it has really started to uh, move towards a mainstream cartridge now. Uh, now you have Wildcats based on it, things like the uh, 6mm Grendel, which is very similar to a 6PPC and a lot of these other cartridges. Uh, but we're mainly going to focus on the 6.5mm Grendel. Now, up to this point, the reason that I really didn't jump in with the 6.5 Grendel is because I have an AR chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, now, the biggest difference between the two is the 6.5 Grendel will fit in a standard AR-15 platform. So, let's say you have a regular 223 or 556 AR-15 that's just sitting over in the corner collecting dust. And that is actually what we had here. Uh, we had a heavy barrel 223 AR that I really didn't shoot very often because the performance just wasn't there for me. It was an accurate rifle. However, it uh, had a 1 to 9 twist barrel in it, which really it only favors the lighter bullets, 55 grains or so. And when we went out and shot our local precision rifle matches, we go out to 500 yards, and our 500 yard targets are usually some uh, fairly large targets, and we don't paint targets uh, throughout the day. So when you get to those last targets late in the day, they're beat up pretty badly. They don't have white paint on them anymore. And I found that uh, AR-15s running a 223 cartridge or 5.56 cartridge, with the lighter bullets, it's really hard to actually see impacts on those targets. So for those reasons, I just kind of put the regular heavy barrel AR-15 up. It sat in the back of the safe and didn't get a lot of use. Well, I was contacted recently by Faxon Firearms, and they are releasing their Match Series barrels, and specifically a Match Series barrel in 6.5 Grendel. So this caused me to take a step back and take a look at the Grendel cartridge and find out, hey, is it something that I really want to get into? Well, since I had a whole rifle that really wasn't being used for much, and the transformation from a 5.56 or a 2.23 to a 6.5 Grendel is really nothing more than a barrel and a bolt replacement. Uh, it really was an easy option to uh, pull this thing out, uh, put a new barrel on it, and then get some experience with the 6.5 Grendel. So, the question you have to ask yourself before you jump into this is why do you want a 6.5 Grendel? If you have an AR sitting around and you're not using it and you want to get into a caliber that carries a little bit more energy, carries a little bit better ballistics, uh, then the 6.5 Grendel may be a really good option for you. But I wanted to compare it and see how it compared ballistically to calibers that I already have. For instance, uh, the 308 and the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, so I went ahead and punched in the ballistic calculator and uh, pulled out some results. Now for our numbers here, I punched in the, the 308, the 6.5 Grendel, and the 6.5 Creedmoor for 500 yards, 1,000 yards, and 1,600 yards. And 1,600 yards is really, you know, pushing it for uh, the 308, obviously. 
Uh, it's really pushing it for the Grendel, and it's really about the limit of what I would consider effective range for the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, so I didn't feel the need to go out any further than that. But at uh, 500 yards with a 308 Winchester, uh, you're looking at 3.5 mils of elevation uh, to hit your target at that distance. Now, the 6.5 Grendel running a uh, 123 ELD, specifically the Hornady Black ammunition that we have here, the uh, 123 ELDM, you're looking at 3.3 mils of elevation. So it actually requires less elevation to hit that 500 yard target versus a 308. Um, you are running at a velocity of 1,720 foot per second when that 175 grain Sierra from the 308 hits the target. Uh, you are running at 1,778 foot per second when that 123 ELD hits the target. Now the 6.5 Creedmoor in comparison only requires 2.7 mils of elevation and it's running at 2,052 foot per second uh, when the 140 ELD hits the target. Uh, so the Creedmoor still wins, but at six or at uh, 500 yards, I think it's really overkill. Uh, and at 500 yards, the uh, Grendel is definitely doing better than the 308. So let's stretch it out to a thousand yards. This is the limit of distance that most PRS matches will go to. Sometimes they will have one stage that goes out further, but a thousand yards is really about the limit for tactical rifle competition. So at a thousand yards, the 308 requires 12.4 mils of elevation to get there, and the bullet is traveling 1,070 foot per second. So with the 175 match king, um, and this is through the load that I run through my uh, Accuracy International AE Mark II when I have a 308 barrel on it. Uh, it is just barely supersonic uh, when it hits that end, and this is on a standard day. So we're comparing all these calibers on a standard day. Um, so just barely supersonic when it hits the target. Now we switch over to the 6.5 Grendel, and it requires 11.5 mils of elevation, so you're running almost a mil less elevation. Uh, and it's running 1,196 foot per second. Again, that's for the 123 ELD. So it's still well into the supersonic range uh, at that point. And the 6.5 Creedmoor, of course, that only requires 8.6 mils, and it's running... Uh, 1,501 foot per second, uh, so still doing quite well at 1,000 yards. And then going for the long shot, shooting out to 1,600 yards, the 308 requires 33.3 .3 mils of elevation, and it's running 865 foot per second. Uh, the 6.5 Grendel is at 29.4, so considerably less elevation. It's running at 909 foot per second, so you're definitely subsonic at that point. And the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor is at 20.6 elevation, and it is 1,074, so just barely supersonic still at 1,600. Uh, so when we look at those numbers and we go across them, uh, you can see that the 6.5 Creedmoor or the 6.5 Grendel definitely outclasses the 308. Uh, so if you're a guy that's trying to decide between a 308 AR or an AR-15 uh, and you were just target shooting, then the 6.5 Grendel may be a really good option. And we're going to see when we get into the accuracy and actually running it uh, if that holds true. Now, if you are looking for something to compete in like a PRS gas gun series or something and you are building a platform from scratch, uh, then my suggestion would be something like the 6.5 Creedmoor or 6 Creedmoor or one of those. Uh, that is definitely going to get you the better performance because one thing that we didn't talk about here, and I'll show you the numbers real quick, is wind drift. Because you are pushing a higher ballistic coefficient bullet faster with the 6.5 Grendel uh, than you are with the 308. When we're looking at a thousand yards at the wind drift, uh, the 308 with the 175 Match King is running about 3.3 mils for a 10 mile an hour wind at 1,000 yards. At uh, the same distance, same wind, the Grendel is running a 2.9, and that's with the 123 uh, ELD. 
Now, by comparison on both of those, the 6.5 Creedmoor with the 140 ELD is 1.9, so considerably less on that uh, wind deviation. And that's really one of the big ones. More shooters miss because of wind uh, than they do because of elevation. So you're still getting some uh, good wind cheating ability with the 6.5 Grendel versus uh, the 308, even though the 308 is shooting that bigger, heavier bullet. Uh, and mainly it's because the Grendel is getting the bullet there quicker. Uh, so really, if you are comparing the 6.5 Grendel versus the 308, the 6.5 Grendel edges it out. If you're comparing the 6.5 Grendel uh, versus the 6.5 Creedmoor, the 6.5 Creedmoor has a significant advantage. Uh, plus the uh, bullets that you're going to be able to run in the 6.5 Creedmoor, um, you have a whole lot more magazine room to play with so you can run the longer, higher ballistic coefficient bullets than that. I was just trying to keep a little bit of a level playing field uh, comparing the 123 ELD to the 140 ELD. Now I believe you could try to squeeze a 140 ELD in the 6.5 Grendel. Uh, we may play with that a little bit later on because I have 140 ELDs here for the 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, but I believe you're going to start to run into some case capacity issues. And when I have seen Grendel's fail in matches, it has usually been because the shooter has tried to push their rifle a little bit too far. Uh, they've tried to push the capabilities of the cartridge up into 6.5 Creedmoor 260 area, and that is just a little bit too much pressure. Uh, when we look at the bolt on the 6.5 Grendel, and this does run a Type 2 bolt, uh, for those of you guys that are really into it. When we look at the bolt, uh, a lot of that bolt face has had to be cut out, so you're starting to get really thin around the edges where you're supporting those bolt lugs. And what I've seen before when guys try to really push pressure limits uh, with the 6.5 Grendel is they end up shearing off bolt lugs, and then, of course, that will cause a catastrophic failure of the rifle. Uh, generally, it won't end up causing injury to the shooter, uh, but the rifle is completely unserviceable at that point unless you're carrying spare bolts to swap things in. And I would say at the point that you start ripping bolt lugs off, uh, you probably need to stop unless you're also carrying spare uh, lower power ammunition. So that's just a quick comparison uh, between the different platforms. Now, one of the big advantages with the 6.5 Grendel over the 308 or the 6.5 Creedmoor is that it does fit in this smaller package. This is a lighter weight overall rifle. It's a more compact overall rifle. Uh, so if you are trying to equip a younger shooter or a smaller shooter or a smaller bodied female shooter, uh, then this may be a really good option. Uh, we have lower recoil, we have lower operating mass, which means when you pull the trigger, you have less weight smashing around inside of the rifle. So it's a little bit less perceived recoil in addition to just a little bit less muzzle blast. And if you have a uh, younger shooter, that can be a huge advantage to them. Now the 6.5 Creedmoor, because it is really, or I'm sorry, 6.5 Grendel, because it is really optimized for the AR-15 platform, you get all the advantages that you get with the AR-15, which is an almost limitless number of accessories uh, to tailor the platform to do exactly what you want it to do. Now here on this setup, we have a Magpul fixed stock, which is nice because it's a relatively lightweight, relatively inexpensive stock. We have a Ergo Tactical Deluxe Grip, which uh, those of you guys that watch the show a lot know, this is one of my favorite AR pistol grips because of the large palm swells and just the overall feel of the grip. I really, really like it. Up front, we have a Midwest Industries tubular handguard. I've had this on the rifle for a while now. Uh, it probably would not be my first pick if I was building a rifle from scratch, and the main reason being is the bottom is rounded. Uh, it's flattened off just a little bit, but it's still a little rounder than I like. I like a flatter bottom if you are using it as a competition gun where you're going to shoot a lot of barricades, that kind of thing. Not a huge deal on here because I will more than likely, if I take this to an actual PRS style match, I will stick some kind of uh, barricade rider on the bottom of here, either a uh, Velcro strip so that I can put one of my bags on it, uh, or I'll put a pigskin or something of that nature on there. So something that will give me just a little bit better grip 
on the barricades and give me a little bit flatter surface uh, to shoot off of. Uh, but overall, it's fine because it's a relatively thin tube comparatively. It doesn't have a ton of rail space sticking off the side of it. Now you'll see this does allow me to put a small rail on the side of the handguard here, and that's so I can mount my brass catcher on here. Uh, the 6.5 Grendel, the uh, brass is a little bit more expensive than your regular 223 brass, so it's definitely something that I want to try to keep track of. And we've talked about brass catchers before. When I'm running a semi-auto gun in a match, it's just really nice to be able to come off that stage and already have all my brass collected in the brass catcher on the side of the gun. So I can just flip that aside, show the RO I'm clear, step off the line, and I don't have to scramble around and try to pick up my brass or at the end of the stage, I uh, try to dig through the piles of brass and figure out where it went to. So that's just a really nice option. Not mandatory by any means. If you're only gonna shoot factory ammunition and you don't reload, there's no real reason for a brass catcher, but if you're shooting something like 6.5 Grendel, you're going to make some other guys really happy because they're going to pick up the brass and they're going to keep it. So the tubular handguard, uh, really simple, really nice uh, ability to put some rails where I want to put them, but I think there are better handguards out on the market now. When we come forward, we are running just a regular fixed gas block. I don't even remember who makes this gas block. It was so long ago that I put this rifle together. Um, but for now, we're going to run a fixed gas block, and we may put an adjustable on it at a later point when we start doing load workups or some of that stuff. Now let's talk about the barrel itself. Uh, this is one of Faxon's new match series barrels, and this is a new thing for them. This is a 416R stainless barrel. Uh, it has 5R rifling in it, which has several benefits that we've talked about previously, uh, one of which being a little bit easier to clean. The 5R rifling profile uh, tends to be a little bit easier on the bullet uh, when the bullet engages the rifling. Um, but uh, overall, it's a really nice step up for them. They are button rifled, but then they are uh, fully stress relieved before they are nitrided. Uh, and the nitriding should give us a little bit of extra barrel life on them. Uh, so really nice to see that. The profile that we have here is their 20 inch heavy fluted barrel. They also offer this in an 18 inch heavy fluted. Now this barrel has a rifle link gas system. Uh, but for those of you guys that are looking for a really lighter weight setup, uh, they also have a 16 and an 18 inch gunner profile, which is a lighter weight profile. However, the 20 inch heavy really overall is not a heavy barrel. Uh, when we swap this on with the, uh, we took off a 20 inch 223 H bar and put this barrel on, it actually lightened up the system overall. So the 6.5 Grendel configuration now is lighter weight than this barrel was, or this rifle was in its 223 configuration. Um, overall, we have a really nice host of features to include an MP3 coated barrel extension. Uh, so a little bit of corrosion resistance, a little bit of lubricity going on in there. Uh, overall, really nice features, and the barrel comes in at a retail price of $329. Uh, so I think we've got a really good value. The muzzle is threaded uh, uh, 5 8 by 24. Uh, so your uh, large frame AR accessories, 30 caliber muzzle devices, 6.5 muzzle devices uh, will easily thread on. There's no uh, crazy uh, muzzle threading to worry about. And we do have a target crown in here, uh, which is a really nice overall feature. Uh, we have a Control 30 caliber break on here right now, uh, but if I decide to do so later on, we can go ahead and screw on a Thunder Beast suppressor or any other uh, 30 caliber or 6.5 caliber suppressor and roll with that. Now, I will be interested to see how well the overall system operates with a fixed gas system and a suppressor. We may run into some overgassing issues there, uh, but the rifle link gas system should help minimize that. So we'll see when we actually get it out and start running it. But for our initial tests, uh, we'll run it with a control break because I really want to see uh, how well this works as a fast handling match gun. And again, since we have a little bit shorter overall length versus the 6.5 Creed, uh, we're running a 20 inch barrel instead of the 24 inch barrel on the Creedmoor. Um, this ought to be a great gun for times that I'm not actually going out and intending to shoot to a thousand yards. And specifically, I really wanna see how well it works at our local matches, which are limited to 500 yards 
uh, due to the range constraints. So that is the really the whole overall goal of this rifle. And finally, to be a test bed uh, for the Faxon Match Series barrels, because I really am interested to see how well these perform at this price point. The magazines that we're going to use right now are the AR Stoner, which uh, these are Midway's brand. I just picked up a couple of magazines when I bought the ammo from Midway. Uh, nice thing is they have a bright blue follower that's marked 6.5 on it. Uh, so that way when they get mixed in with my AR-15 magazines, which they eventually probably will, uh, things tend to float around in the range bag and do all kinds of interesting things. Uh, these are 10 round magazines and uh, they should work pretty well. I believe these are actually manufactured by C products, uh, but don't hold me to that. Uh, so we will see how well these work and we'll report back to you when we come back with the barrel report uh, and tell you how well these magazines have worked for us. Uh, one thing that you will notice uh, that is a little bit different on this rifle is this guy right here. Uh, we do have a Law Tactical folding stock adapter on this rifle, uh, which just really makes it a much smaller overall package when you're trying to throw it in a range bag, get it to where it needs to go. And again, that just comes down to the overall benefit of this rifle. It allows things to uh, be packed up a little bit more compact. Now, of course, you could always just punch the pins and uh, separate the upper and lower receiver. On a competition rifle where it's not a defensive situation, you don't have to quickly deploy it. Uh, that's kind of nice. But if you're carrying this thing around in, say, a uh, scabbard-type pack, uh, it's nice to be able to just flip the stock to the side, stick it down in there, and have a more compact overall package. Uh, also, you'll notice the trigger that we have in here. Uh, we have put a Trigger Tech adjustable trigger in here, uh, and we are finishing our evaluation of the Trigger Tech triggers. I pulled this out of one of the other rifles and dropped it in here uh, since this is a more precision oriented setup. And this trigger is running about two and a half pounds right now, so it's a good overall trigger. Uh, for a precision rifle, uh, but we'll report back on the full uh, trigger tech review soon. And that's about it for this Mail Call Mondays. If you guys have any questions on the 6.5 Grendel, uh, please go ahead and leave them in the comments section below if you're watching us on YouTube, or send them to us at 8541tactical.com, or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. I really want to hear what you guys have to say about the 6.5 Grendel. Uh, do you think it's a good long-range cartridge? Do you think it's a good hunting cartridge, plinking cartridge, etc.? Uh, what do you think the 6.5 Grendel is good for, and where does it fit into the AR-15 or the large frame AR bigger picture. Um, I love hearing your guys' comments, your input. Uh, I love hearing what you guys have to say. Uh, and that is about it. So until next time, get out and shoot.